This is going to be lecture outline seven. We're talking about chapter five, thermochemistry, and this is Roman numeral number one. There are two main types of energy. Uh, one of them is kinetic energy. Kinetic energy, as you may know, is energy of motion. We've talked about this before when we talked about gases, but uh, when we talked about kinetic energy and its relationship to velocity, there's an equation that we'll, we'll use that kinetic energy and kinetic energy uh, is going to be represented by the symbol Ke. Ke equals one half mv squared. And we talked about this last time and we put a bar over uh, kinetic energy to make it average kinetic energy for gases. And we said that we would put a bar over it for velocity to get an average velocity as well. We're going to get more specific about this equation. We're going to do an example in a second. And uh, what we need to know is that when we plug in for mass, m is mass and mass has to be in kilograms. And V is velocity, and velocity has to be in meters per second. As an example, a rifle shoots a 4.25 gram bullet at a velocity of 965 meters per second. What is its kinetic energy in joules? Uh, we will define one joule as one kilogram meter squared per second squared. And we'll plug into this equation. The mass of 4.25 grams, we will convert that to kilograms by moving the decimal point three places to the left. And velocity is given in meters per second, so we'll leave that there. That quantity gets squared. Let me get my calculator so I can multiply this out. And then, don't forget my one half. I'm gonna divide by two. And I get 1978.8 uh, to three sig figs. 1.98 times 10 to the third. That's gonna be a kilogram meter uh, squared per second squared. And although we don't have to really talk about it too much, that is the unit of joules in other SI units. From now on, we'll just use joules when we talk about the energy associated with chemical reactions, but I wanted to give you a little bit of a taste of where joules comes from. I also wanted to show you that uh, in this particular example, it only takes 1.98 times 10 to the third joules uh, for this bullet. Uh, that's the energy stored in the motion of this bullet, the kinetic energy. And we will see that uh, this is a relatively small amount of energy compared to energies that are involved in chemical reactions. Now, uh, for kinetic energy, except at zero Kelvin, All materials have kinetic energy, zero Kelvin being uh, absolute zero. Uh, the kinetic energy of motion of gas particles is called thermal energy. Because it is the energy associated with temperature, and we've talked about this equation before, average kinetic energy, that's what the bar means, is proportional to temperature. Um, and so thermal, we think of thermometers and temperature, so kinetic energy is going to be the energy associated with temperature, and therefore the thermal energy. Now let's talk about potential energy, PE, that is energy of position.
Potential energy requires a restoring force such as gravity. Perhaps in, from physics you're familiar with the equation that potential energy equals mgh, where m is mass, g is gravity, and h is height. Uh, g, gravity, is the restoring force. That is the force of attraction that uh, brings together two things. For example, if I have a ball above the floor, the amount of potential energy stored in that ball is related to the mass of the ball, gravity, and the height of the ball. So the higher the ball is, the more potential energy there is because the height will be larger. For electrical charges, the restoring force is the electrostatic field. We won't be getting into uh, too many equations of the electrostatic field, but what we need to know is that for a positive and a negative charge, those two are attracted to each other. And the thing that attracts them is the electrostatic field. So attracted to each other by the electrostatic field. So you got that in? Good. Um, and the electrostatic field for charges works in much the same way that gravity does as a restoring force for masses. Now, the next one example I want to go over is three, which is the higher energy configuration? Two charges that are farther apart in A or two charges that are closer together in B. And uh, this is tricky. This is something I want to cover explicitly. First off, an exact analogy to the ball above the floor. If we have two balls, each with their own heights, the one with the high, higher height, the larger height, is going to be the one that has the larger potential energy. In exact analogy, the two charges that are farther apart, just like the ball uh, and, well, the center of the earth is truly the thing attracting to it. Uh, the ball can only get down to the floor before it's uh, stopped. But an exact analogy, A is the higher energy configuration. There is more energy stored. So first off, A is the higher energy configuration. There is more energy stored in the positions, and these are potential energies, more energy stored in the positions of charges that are farther apart. It's more energy stored in the positions of charges that are farther apart. And uh, a, there's going to be a continuing theme as we go through the rest of the course in this relationship between kinetic energy and potential energy. Uh, kinetic energy we will associate with temperature. Potential energy we will associate with the positions of charges. And of course, in chemistry, those charges are going to be um, at, related to atoms in chemical bonds, as we will say. Now, uh, chemical energy, uh, as, we, uh, as I was just saying, usually refers to the, to the energy that is stored in the bonds of molecules. These bonds form when electrons are able to respond to the force fields created by two or more atomic nuclei so that they can be regarded as manifestations of electrostatic potential energy. And so what this means is that the picture will never be as simple almost never be as simple as having two charges that are directly and easily attracted. And the positions are going to be more complicated than this, but the take-home message is that chemical energy 
stored in bonds is potential energy, energy of position. If you change the positions of the atoms as bonds are broken and then made again in new compounds, you will change the energy stored in those new bonds. Okay, heat and work are processes and cannot be stored. Let's start with the definition of heat, a process by which a body acquires or loses energy due to a temperature difference. The word temperature tells us that uh, heat is related to kinetic energy, energy of motion, just like we were talking about. And uh, it's a little hard to see. This says radiation, conduction, convection, uh, more radiation on this side. But it turns out that um, as heat moves from one place to another place in a very real way, it is all because a faster moving particle at higher temperature, remember higher temperature, higher kinetic energy, um, and therefore higher velocity, is going to bump into a slower moving particle, slower moving in general, although of course we know there's a distribution of velocities, but in general, higher temperature, lower temperature, collision, transfer of energy to the lower temperature, and in fact, so this one will tend to have more energy, this one will tend to have less energy as the two are uh, coming together as far as uh, temperature. One gets warmer because it gains energy um, in general. And so what I'm attempting to show in this picture is that if you have a, a flame which is heating the air molecules, uh, it is doing it by having the air molecules collide with the hotter air molecules um, inside the flame, they're becoming higher temperature air molecules. You can feel those uh, air molecules if you sit next to the flame as they bump into your face and transfer energy to your face. They bump into the bottom of the pot. The solid is does have kinetic energy. It's above zero Kelvin. Uh, however, in solids, unlike gas particles, so gas particles can fly around wherever they would like to. Uh, however, solid particles are <laughs> confined, there we go, confined to only vibrate in place. Okay, so a gas molecule collides with, here we go, collides with a solid particle. That solid particle then vibrates faster in place more kinetic energy, higher temperature. That's how the bottom of this pan becomes hotter. It bumps into the water molecules, transfers kinetic energy. These solid particles are going to be moving faster, vibrating faster. That's how conduction takes place all the way up the handle. And so transfer of heat energy, changing of temperature is all about kinetic energy. Uh, a transfer of energy by any other means than by heat is called work. There are two types of work. Uh, mechanical work is going to be uh, work equals force times distance. And uh, for reasons that we will talk about, we're going to put a negative sign in that equation, so we'll come back to that. Electrical work, on the other hand, we're not going to say too much about it other than to say that electrical work is going to be most easily represented by a voltage times an amperage. And you will talk about that uh, more in Chem 1020, should you be uh, blessed to take that. Um, yeah, I think that's all I want to say about that. And work can be completely converted into heat. Heat cannot be completely converted into heat. Sorry, uh, work. So please fix that typo. These are true statements. They are statements that will not come up in Chem 1010 uh, on quizzes or exams. So I'm gonna put them in parentheses, meaning they are useful to know, 
but uh, not on the quizzes or exams.